Thousands of Corn Belt farmers have attended precision planting meetings recently to see the new technology being introduced this year. The first was the Cornerstone Toolbar System. Farmers supply their own toolbar, and precision planting will uh, create planter row units customized for that individual farmer. We're not just thinking about planters anymore. We're thinking about a planter system. Each individual row, if we can set it optimally, is going to give us the best benefit because that is, the, that is what the table stakes say. That's the performance we're desiring is out of our planter system, not out of a wide or, or the entire planter. The bar does not play into the criteria that we've listed up here. So now as I think through what's next for us, it may be that we want to go more down the planting system path because of the optimization, the integration of technology. And so that's really what I wanted to dive into today, is kind of look at Cornerstone in the lens of our operation as we're thinking about making decisions for our future, as we're thinking about what's going to help us continue to leave a legacy for the future generations of our farm. What is the planter, what is the planting system that is going to help us do that? And so that's why I wanted to put it in that perspective. Does that sound like a good plan? That work for everybody? All right, wonderful. So the first thing that we think about is, what are the, how are the things that are different on this planter, so planting system? And the thing that I think about the most is optimization for performance. What are the agronomic benefits that this planter system provides? And so when we first talked earlier, Justin mentioned, hey, there were two camps. There's always two camps. When you, when you step up and you look at this and you say, that's a trailing gauge wheel, that's an interesting choice. I have an opinion about that. Well, everybody has an opinion about that, right? Even within our own organization, myself included, we sat in one camp or the other. It was like precision planning had its own Hatfield and McCoys, right? We had a feud going on. And so we said, hey, how do we best, how do we best settle this feud? Well, we said, hey, let's, let's actually dive into the data. The trailing gauge wheel is in light blue. The leading gauge wheel is in pink. And the pink, when you see the, the spikes, that's the shock load that our planting system is receiving. So what does that shock load mean at the end of the day? That means we're impacting our meter performance. That means we're impacting our depth consistency. Those things that at the end of the day can cause us to hurt our even and consistent emergence, which doesn't allow us to hit our yield potential. Cab information systems was next with a newer and bigger screen to display more information about what was happening behind your tractor. I look at metrics. Is there any way you could give me more room? Is there any way I could, I could see more at once? And it's, it's so awesome to see the arc of growers as, they, as, the, as the light turns on, as they see how much confidence they can build in their equipment. And so it is with this conversation and with this arc that today we announce the 16-inch monitor for the 2020. So the 16-inch monitor is the largest in-cab monitor in the entire industry. It's going to give growers the ability, as they add more and more technology into their operation and onto each pass, to view more of that information <coughs> at one time. One of the cool parts about the 16-inch monitor and about our focus on bringing technology that doesn't break the bank is the way that we've architected the Gen 3. You know, the rest of the industry, they bring out a new monitor and every grower thinks, well, that means i got to trade in the, the one that I've already got. i got to trade in the monitor that I've already got. Now, the way that we've architected the Gen 3 is that actually we have a thing called the display-based module. You don't ever have to remember that. There's no quiz. But the brains actually goes under the seat. And that 10-inch screen is actually a small part of the cost of it bringing a Gen 3 into the cab. And so as we launch the 16-inch monitor here, it is actually compatible with every Gen 3 that has ever been sold all the way back to 2018 when we launched it. So this is a way, again, where a grower has equipment. They've been using the Gen 3 for three, four, five, six years, and we've provided a way that they can upgrade their experience without having to trade everything in to get something new. Right? You don't need to trade in the things that don't wear out. Precision Planting also upgraded sprayer technology to address problems of variable coverage 
while making turns in a field or navigating over other field contours. So what if, what if we could uh, maintain consistent spray quality, maintain consistent rate around turns, and improve the efficiency of our sprayers? Well, precision planning has that technology and the tools to do that. The first one is the 2020 in the cab of the sprayer. And the second one is Symphony Nozzle out on the boom. Symphony Nozzle controls the rate on a nozzle by nozzle basis. So now as we go around turns, each individual is going to, individual nozzle is going to compensate for the speed of that boom and maintain that proper rate. As we speed up and slow down, each individual nozzle will change the rate and the output will change the output of that nozzle to maintain consistent pressure even as we increase speed. So a rate controller system, that last example, we went from eight to about 14 and a half mile an hour, changing from 30 PSI all the way up to 80 PSI. Symphony nozzle with the properly sized tip can go from five mile an hour, so it can go slower all the way up to 20 mile an hour at the exact same spray quality. And so we found that increases growers' efficiency because when it's good running, they can go faster and still maintain that spray quality. Symphony nozzle's individual nozzle control also gives us the capability of being faster by spraying through waterways. As seen in this video, each individual nozzle is going to shut off as it hits the boundary mapped into 2020. This is a massive time saver for anybody that has waterways. And at the same time, it's less stressful. The most stressful part of spray is tracing waterways, is tracing field edges. And now we can spray through those if they're mapped into 2020. Also, we're running over less crop. Unless we have headlands on our waterways, when we're tracing around them, we are running over crop. What else does individual nozzle control get us? Well, section valves have to wait till the last nozzle crosses into coverage before they shut off. And so they have more chemical waste due to that overlap. Symphony nozzle is individual nozzle control. And we're going to minimize that overlap as much as possible. And the radical system introduced a couple of years ago to increase soil fertility measurement and get away from soil test sacks has a new feature that standardizes every sample placed in the analyzer. We decided that if our goal is to be as efficient and as error-free as possible, we needed a new option. And so we developed a soil container that we call GeoTube. And this is a purpose-built, robust container resilient to the elements. And so there's really three parts that are notable about this container. The top part you can see here is the cap. And so if I were to pass this around, you'd actually have a hard time pulling this cap off and putting it back on. And I'll explain why that is in a minute. But one reason is such that if I drop this tube, that cap stays on and doesn't allow the soil to come off, to come out. The second piece is a plunger here at the bottom. So the purpose of this plunger is to scrape the side walls of this container as we're pushing the soil out of it. Because we want to reuse this container, we don't want to contaminate the next sample with the previous sample. The final feature of the geotube is this tag here at the bottom. So this is an RFID tag. And the purpose of the RFID tag is to replace the Sharpie on the soil bag. It's it's to store all the relevant information about that zone, like the latitude and the longitude, of course, and any other relevant information about that zone gets stored on this tag. Now, the reason you don't have to take the cap on, off and put the cap back on is because GeoPress does that for you. And so GeoPress is your partner in the field. You can see we've got a GeoPress up on this UTV up here. And there's Eli. He's dumping some soil cores 
into the left container on the geopress. He flops it up. It's going to run those soil cores through a grinder, and in the matter of just a second, those soil cores are going to be reduced to finely ground soil particles. He'll then take those soil particles in that cup. You'll see him pulling it out there. He'll dump it in this funnel. As soon as you tip the funnel, it's going to start packing that soil into the geotube. It's going to recap the geotube for you, and then it's going to write any relevant information onto that RFID tag. The idea is that we want to save Eli time in the field because his time is his most valuable asset. You can see here a side-by-side -side of the geopress process versus the traditional process. What you're going to see is by the time the geopress is pulling out of the field and that frame turns black, on the right side of the traditional process, he's just getting started in the third zone. And so he's pulling out the geopress. He's just getting started with the traditional approach. The feedback from the field is, this saves me a good 20, 30% time in the field. Just by taking care of those tedious operations that I could fat finger, that I could mess up, and allow me to focus on getting a good sample. Now Eli's going to take those samples back to his shop. And so he's got a machine shed where he stores his equipment. He's going to have a radical lab back in his shop in a corner of the shop. You can see we've got one running over here in the corner. And what he has here is, frankly, it's the world's first of its kind. It's the world's first fully automated soil analysis system. The world's first fully automated soil lab. And the goal here is that not only does Eli have control of what soil samples get run first, and not only is there an efficiency of being able to take samples and put them right on the rack instead of running to UPS and getting them shipped off to the lab. But this lab is designed such that it doesn't cut corners. This lab is designed to be efficient and accurate. And so we're going to step through what that looks like, but it's fully automated. So it's been running ever since you came in the room a few minutes ago. And of course, there's no human hands that are touching the soil. Any of the steps that were time sensitive are now fully automated, taking care of any risk of differences from one sample to the next. Now this lab doesn't require a team of chemists to run it. It simply requires a garden hose. Of course, we purify the water coming out of the garden hose. But a garden hose connection, it requires an electrical connection, and it requires compressed air. The lab thinks for itself, it calibrates itself, it checks itself, it fixes itself. The idea is that Eli, he just wants to be a soil sampler. He just wants to be an agronomist. He just, just wants to be a farmer. He really didn't sign up to be a lab owner and operator. So the lab takes care of itself. The goal is that Radical Lab delivers a maximum accuracy analysis in record time. And so from the time that Eli sticks a sample in the rack to the time that that sample is coming through is only 15 to 20 minutes later. Let's step through the Radical Lab. The first thing that happens is the soil gets checked in. So there's an RFID reader at the top of an elevator after we pull the sample off the rack. That RFID reader is going to read the contents of that tag and associate those contents with the soil sample as it makes its journey through the whole lab. The next step is we have to pull that cap off again. And so you can see there we're going to grab the tube and we're going to pop the, pop the cap off with those grippers at that point, you're going to see in this uh, geotube ejection chamber, you're going to see the soil sample get pushed out, just like that. The plunger will retract. We're going to wash that tube, and then it'll get returned to the empty basket for the next soil sampling trip to the field. The next thing that happens is the soil gets ground. Now, this is a picture of some green dye in there, so you can see a little bit better what's going on. But the soil is going to get ground. We want to break down all of those soil aggregates, all those soil aggregates to make sure that we get the best possible representation of the nutrients available to the crop. We want to blend that soil thoroughly. And anything that is larger than 2 millimeters, we want to reject. So any crop residue, any large rocks, any other foreign matter that makes it into that soil sample gets removed. At this point, after we've ground the soil, we want to get a precise ratio of soil to water. Now, the goal of this is to replace 
the two gram, the two gram scoop. And so what we're going to do here is we have multiple sensors. We have a volume sensor, a weight sensor, a soil density sensor. Our goal is to get a precise mass of soil and to not take shortcuts like the two gram scoop does in the process of getting the amount of soil that we're attempting to analyze. At this point, we're going to send the sample to the back side of the lab to a system that we call Microflow. Now, Microflow is a first of its kind. Microflow is a, a system of pneumatic valves and pumps that are embedded inside of an acrylic manifold. And so what are we doing here? We're essentially automating the hands of a chemist. And so anything you do volumetrically in a lab where you're measuring out amounts of chemicals to mix the soils, all of that happens automatically with the microflow technology, automating many of the processes that take place in the lab and, of course, eliminating the errors that can happen from the human touches.